libraries are pre-made, pre-textured, pre-shaded uh, collections of assets ready to render out of the box. Great example, Megascans. Yes, you can uh, import them to many places with textures connected already, but rarely they would look as intended out of the box. So you still have to do quite a lot of work on each Megascan before it looks as good as it should. In libraries you can store pretty much whatever you want Octane related. Geometry and its shaders. Just shaders. Or even parts of setups such as some fancy dirt overlays. You can store your client's favorite shader sets and be sure that shaders are consistent from project to project. You can pre-make cinema grade trees and use them as fast as a few clicks. And they will also work in the most efficient manner because these libraries, they are just building blocks and you are getting the cleanest structure of the scene possible. Bottom line is you build up your arsenal as you go. And the more libraries you made, the faster you get. First, let's discuss RBX and OCS differences. Both are Octane native project files, except RBX is a packed container. It's a self-sufficient project file. You open it up and it has all the assets within it. RBX scene's size will accordingly reflect that. The bigger your assets are, the bigger the RBX will get. And if you let automation such as DCC full scene baking into RBX take over, the size of the RBX will inevitably and unnecessarily get blown up. For a long time, this container was the only one Render Network supported. OCS project file, on the other hand, is just a scene description with the absolute uh, file paths. This file doesn't get bigger if you add more files into it, because it doesn't store them. It only references them and loads them into memory upon request. This container is preferred for studios with environment. For example, our studio. We have many machines that need access to same files. So we have server with assets. I wouldn't want my team to waste space on duplicated data. Instead, we have repositories with assets and everyone have access to them. So instead of storing all the assets and packed RBX on top of them, we use OCS files and the assets remain on servers. While LookDev libraries are just tiny files with badass shading work stored in them. With Render Network, previously you were forced to pack everything into RBX. Now, not only Render Network supports uh, some DCCs natively, like Blender and C4D, we specifically worked, and I'm very proud of it, on the direct OCS support. It means that we don't have to pack anything at all, and we can preserve absolute file paths in our projects. Render Network Manager will find and upload all the assets itself. This puts Render Network and Download Manager on a totally different level compared to competition. What's the big deal with OCS? When working with RBX and specifically big scenes, trivial project saving becomes inconvenient and annoying to say the least. Because every time you want to save your project, you have to wait for all the gigabytes of data to be resaved. And depending on the scale of your project, it may be a lot of gigabytes. With OCS, saving is instant because again, it doesn't store those assets. Moreover, OCS is unencrypted, bringing it closer to the likes of Clarice IFX. It means that I can open the project in a regular text editor and see what's inside. For experienced users, this is another way of working with your scene. We loved it because the project became invincible. In an unlikely event of a crash and corruption of the scene, you can go into OCS and find faulty code lines to fix. This also allows many more advanced pipeline manipulations and adaptations that uh, higher end pipeline TDs would be familiar with. Let's get back to direct uh, OCS support and Render Network Manager for a minute. What does it do? You just take your tiny OCS file, drag and drop it into the manager, and the manager will scan your project to determine if any of the assets were previously uploaded to the network already. This means that it's a really advanced iterations method. Say you've built a scene, uh, you rendered an iteration and realized you're not happy with the lighting and the camera. 
So you go back, you redo your lighting, uh, redo your camera, save the project, drag and drop it to the manager. Manager scans the project, realizes that all the assets were previously uploaded and uh, uploads only camera and the lighting without wasting the bandwidth on something that was already there. This works not only for your individual account, but for the network globally. So if your team is working on several shots with shared assets, they will benefit from this differential system as well. Only unique files will be uploaded. And this is possible through hash filtering. Each file has its unique hash number. If even a byte changes, the hash number gets reassigned. So it's impossible to mix things up. Then there's the question of how to store your library. As I mentioned several times, Octane Standalone is rather forgotten software for now. And there are a lot of funny caveats within it. One of them is the fact that local DB that would so conveniently serve as a perfect assets browser doesn't support OCS. It will only show RBX files. Nonetheless, uh, if you find local DB more convenient than drag and dropping, you can build a collection of RBX libraries and use them that way. We, as mentioned, uh, prefer OCS to avoid duplication of data on our servers. Now you know the difference and can decide which format works best for you. Since I discovered the snappiness of standalone, I prefer to look deaf in there. It's just another level faster. And I'm surprised to say I even got used to the mutant sausage uh, nodes. They kind of started to make sense to me. I would prefer to have uh, options of how the nodes are built, horizontally or vertically though. When working with assembly softwares, it's at first hard to get used to the fact you can't build anything in them. You can only import assets and put them together. So that's what you must do. Import geometry, import textures, put them all together and save as you usually would. The next time you need this library, you just drag and drop it in your scene. There are a few important tips I would like to give you about library structure. First, the way you build your libraries depends on whether it's a single asset library or a collection of assets library. Perfect example, Megascan static rocks. They would all have a shared shader, but you wouldn't want to store them as individual files. Reason for that is simple. If you decide to pack your project into RBX in the end to either use on a render network or share with colleagues, then duplicated shaders will simply occupy more space in your RBX. This would get resolved on the render network later, but it's unnecessarily blowing up the size of your RBX. Our tree libraries look like this. Each tree species live in its own library. Shaders are shared and it's the most efficient and optimized library there can be. Second tip is about the structure within the library. There are a few nodes I like to use. First one is material map node. It allows you to assign shaders after geometry and not to it. It opens up the opportunity to swap geometry later without redoing shading assignments. For example, you have a library of static pines, but later you decided that, in fact, you want your pines to be animated. Usually, you would import animated geometry and redo assignments, but with the material map node, you just swap your static trees to a new animated one. And if the structure upon export time was the same, everything will work flawlessly. Shading pins are controlled with different kind of grouping from DCC to DCC. In Houdini, it's groups. All the groups will be those circles at the top of your imported geometry. In Cinema 4D, it will be selection tags, and in Blender, it probably will be groups as well. Final tip is to enclose your whole library into a node graph with outputs. You simply select everything in your library, group it, name it, then go inside and add geometry out nodes. I would recommend naming these two so that you know exactly what output is what asset. Then upon import, the most complex and complicated libraries will look neat and tidy. As standalone did not develop as assembly software all these years, many things require improvement. One of such things is live referencing. For example, in Clarice, exactly the same library's philosophy 
would be live referenced. So if anything changed in the original library, the changes would get propagated to everything that references it. In Octane currently, this is not the case. If you updated your original library, you would have to re-import it in order for changes to show up. And I remind you, there is a board with the suggestions of improvements of standalone that I've made. Link can be found in the video description. Share your suggestions and ideas in the comments to this video. All interesting and constructive comments that were not previously mentioned in the board will get added for future discussions with Otto. If you're sharing my enthusiasm, then your interest is exactly what can bring the evolution to this software. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we will discuss building libraries through Houdini.